Today we're going to be looking at the Lattice 2 Workbench and we're going to be looking at the Series feature, also known as the Power Series. Now what this allows us to do is take an object, say a cube, a sketch, or anything we can get to the parameters of and create a compound of that object with each single item in that compound being customizable by a spreadsheet or a list. So what will happen is we offer up a list and say we'll use, that's coming to the part workbench and we use a cube. If we look at the cube, we've got a number of properties in here, length, width, and height. I can tell this power series to say, create a copy of this cube with a length of one and then another length of 20, another length of 30, another length of five. So four copies of that cube in a compound object. And when we change that list of properties, each of those single items will change depending on what we've changed in the list. We can offer up a spreadsheet as well. So we're gonna show you how to do that. First, I've got the cube on screen and I'm gonna come over to Lattice 2 Workbench. Obviously, you will need to install this from Tools, Add-on Manager, and you find Lattice 2 in there. We're gonna select this cube and select the series feature. This will go into error and it's saying about recomputing, but that's fine. Let's hit continue. The cube has disappeared and we've got this new power series icon in the tree view. Let's pull this out so we can see the properties within. Now the properties that we're interested in are the object, which is the box that's just been made invisible. We can see that by coming into here, clicking on that cube and pressing the space bar. So we can see the properties of that box. And also we're interested in the parameter reference this one here. Now one warning is we don't use the formula for this one. If we use the formula, this doesn't work. What we're going to put in here does look like a formula, but it's actually not. It's just a reference to that property. So we have to get to that property. If I click on the cube, if we look down to the bottom left, you can see what the cube is called. It's called box. So we don't use the actual label, we're using the name of the object. So we've got to reference this by box. Come back to the power series. And I'm going to change, say, the length. Come down to that reference, parameter reference, and type in box dot length. Remember that the case does matter here, so it's going to be capital L for this. Parameter type, that's fine, that's float, that's okay. We can change it to integer, string, etc. in there. And then we come down to the spreadsheet link or the values. Now, if we look at the value source, it's saying values property. And we've got spreadsheet generation in there. I'm gonna keep it at value properties. That means I can take these values here, click on the little button on the end and decide what values I want in here. So I'm gonna go 20, new line, 10, new line, and then eight. So we've got three values in there. There's no commas on the end. There's no spaces, they're all on new lines. And we just hit OK. So now we set up our values and the parameter reference it's going to target, box.length and the value source, which is the values property, this one here. We now need to find the recompute, recomputing, which is disabled at the moment. If we select this to enabled and click off, you see what's happened here. Power series has been created. At this point, come into the cube and press the space bar. We don't want to see that anymore. And we've got three objects in there. I know they're crammed together, but they're all of different sizes. What I can do with this is say, take a placement. So let's go for a linear array. So we place that linear array in there, sit in there. Click on the linear array. That's creating the number of elements to something like Let's come down and have a look. We at the moment we've got a count of five. I'm gonna set this to 15. Also, we need to change the span so we can increase the array out. We've got a span at end of 20 millimeters, so it's just 20 millimeters long at the moment. Let's place that at 100. May need a little more in there. Let's place this as 200, so they're evenly spaced. And get some space between these so we can see what's going on. So now we've got that in there. And it's the usual way of attaching a compound of objects to a linear array. So what you're doing is attaching an array to a linear array. The power series is an array. 
So we select the array, we control select the linear array, and we use this icon here, which is populated with children because this is full of children. So each one of these is a child. Also available from Lattice 2. Populate with children, populate with children. It's going to come up a warning because we've got too many placements in that linear array, which is fine. Continue. And you can see how they've been placed in there. Let's come into that linear array and increase the span. And put this at 300. And what we want to do also is hide the power series because we've got the original object there. Press the spacebar on that. So we've got the linear array and the populate linear array with power series still visible. We can hide this if we want. So you can see that we've got the individual ones. And if we look back at the power series and look at the values, we've got one of 20, we've got one of 10, and we've got one of eight. Now, a good thing with the populate linear array, or that linear array, when we've done the population of that, we can come down and actually repeat those. So there's an object repeat, and it's called looping object sequence. At the moment, that's false. Drop this down to true. And we get repeats of that object that fill that linear array of placements. Hope you've enjoyed that tutorial, and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.